Hi everybody, my name is Judah, and I'm here to talk to you today about Hadoop, which is a beginner's guide to big data storage and processing. So, just an overview of what we'll be talking about today. Uh, first, what is Hadoop? Some of you may have heard the term tossed around when we're talking about big data. Some of you may have no idea what it is. Um, but by the end of this presentation, hopefully you guys will know what Hadoop is. That's not the main, the main point. Um, secondly, what problems does Hadoop solve? Like, why did we need to develop this whole new infrastructure to deal with big data? Uh, next is, how does Hadoop actually solve these problems? Uh, lastly, we'll look at a really brief overview of the ecosystem that is Hadoop and all the tools and components that come with it. Um, and then, finally, some key takeaways for those of you who don't really want to listen and just want to get enough for an interview. <laughs> um, so, what is Hadoop? So, Hadoop is a framework for s storing and processing information. Now, typically we're talking about a lot of information, at least 10 terabytes, but really we're talking about petabytes of information, like a lot. Um, uh, now, originally this was inspired by some Google papers in 2003 um, called the Google Distributed File System and MapReduce. And after that, they saw the Apache started this open source project called Apache Nutch, um, which later turned into this project called Hadoop, which was actually the name of one of the lead developer's son's toy elephant. And that's how it originally got its name. And you can see um, Doug Cutting and Hadoop in the picture on the right. So what problems is, are Hadoop solving? So let's go back about 15 years ago. We're on the forefront of this whole internet thing. And we're, we're collecting a lot of information, really more information than we can process with the computers that we, we have at this, at this time period. So the questions are, how can we start processing data quickly? I mean, we have some really powerful computers, but A, they're really expensive. And even those computers, they're not fast enough to deal with this really growing mountain of data that we're, we're accumulating. And the next step is, even if we can maybe solve this issue right now, we know we're only going to be growing exponentially in terms of data. How do we scale this process and make it so that we can really um, look through more data quickly and make it scalable? So in order to look into that question. I like this quote by Eric Raymond. And he says, smart data structures and dumb code works a lot better than the other way around. So let's look into the data structure that is Hadoop. So Hadoop is a NoSQL database. Now, it's not the first NoSQL database ever, um, but it's a really great example of how different data architectures can make something really, really powerful. Now, just to brush up on some terms, SQL. Um, SQL is basically a structured query language. So we're talking about predefined tables with predefined columns or rows, um, meaning that we know what's going to be input beforehand. Now, that's different from unstructured data that is Hadoop, where you're just dumping in files as they are originally, a text file, an MP3 file, a video file, whatever it is. Um, and the difference is one is a schema on read, and the other is a schema on write. So schema on, on write, let's say, when you're putting in information, let's say with SQL, you know what you're, what you're putting in, and you might get a validation error if you put it in wrong. Um, but that's not the, the way with uh, schema on, on read, where you're just dumping in data as it is, and you don't have to transfer, let's say, an MP3 file to text. So you don't lose any of the valuable information that you might need to use later on. Um, so the reason that's important is because we don't want to mutate any of the original data, and we don't need to know beforehand what information we're going to need later on. So all right. Now we collected all this information, how do we actually store it? So one of the main components of Hadoop is the Hadoop Distributed File System. Pretty self-explanatory, it's distributed files across nodes. Um, but how exactly does that solve our problem? Number one is it uses commodity equipment. We're talking very cheap servers that don't really do much. And that's important because you can easily add or replace a node to the system. If you need more data, you just add another node. Uh, it's really simple. So we're using a lot, sometimes thousands, upwards of tens of thousands of just basic servers. So this keeps our costs really low and makes sure everything is very scalable. Now, the storage, we do, we, the way Hadoop works is that it has file redundancy. So we take the same file and copy it multiple times and send the same file to many servers. Now, it seems really redundant. Yeah, that's, that's the point. Um, the idea here is that memory or disk is really cheap. And what's expensive is the processing power. So instead of storing everything on one computer, we spread the information in bite-sized blocks that will be copied out to multiple servers. So this method takes into account and expects node failure. We're going to have hardware that just collapses. 
Um, and when that happens, we can just easily take one of the files that's on a different computer and copy it over to another one. So we keep having this redundancy so that if something uh, breaks, we'll have the information. And the second really important piece of that is that if we have multiple files, well, multiple servers with the same file, we can do what's called parallel processing on the same information in two different places, which is one of the key parts that I'll get into in a moment. And the last uh, sort of term is that a cluster is really a group of these servers. Uh, and each cluster is going to have a name node that, set, that stores the locations of all the files among these thousands or hundreds or whatever number of servers. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like. You have a name node really at the top, and it distributes or holds the location on the data nodes of what each file is holding. And you can see the different colors in each data node represents the same file. So you have the same file across different nodes. Um, and the backup node is what happens if your name node breaks. You don't lose all the data. You still have another name node you can copy over if you ever need it. Uh, awesome. So now let's talk a little bit about the brain part of MapReduce, of, of Hadoop, which is MapReduce. Now MapReduce is basically an, an execution engine, which we'll see how the data actually flows between the files. And finally, the parallel processing component, which is how do we do this data uh, processing really, really fast. And we can, I can talk about it for a while, and you would probably not understand it because there's a lot of going on. So I'm just going to show you an example of how it works. It's a lot easier to understand. So here we have um, a client, as you can see on the left. The client submits a job to the server, uh, to the job tracker. It says, oh, I need to get a job done. Awesome. So the job tracker will say, all right, name node, where are all the files that I need to process this data? And then the name node is going to be like, all right, in this location, these servers, check it out. It's like, all right, awesome. Now the job tracker says, all right, get to it. He sends via a task tracker to the data nodes a job assignment. They all get it. They understand what they have to do. And at this point, they start computing in parallel what's going on. And eventually, they'll all be done. And they'll let the job tracker know that, hey, we, all, we finished in this information, and they're going to store the data that they finished on the data node. At that point, the job tracker tells the client, all right, everything's done. The client's going to ask the name node for the information. And the name node will you know, make it look nice and pretty and send it back to the client. And that's pretty much how that all works. Now, the second part of this MapReduce is the parallel processing. Right? How do we do all this um, at the same time? And again, this is a lot easier to show than to explain. So I'll go through another fairly simple example. So there's three parts to this MapReduce processing, which is map, which is splitting the tasks among the different nodes. Each node is going to separate the t it, its piece of the task into key value pairs. Then we're going to do a shuffle to transfer from the mappers to the reducers by key. And then the reducer is going to complete the function, or in this case, we'll see it counting. So let's say the task is we have 1,000 playing cards. And we want to count, each, count all the cards, but separate it into each suit. So that's, that's the task. So what we're going to do is, number one, we're going to, each node is assigned, let's say, a deck of cards. All right? And each node is going to separate them into its own suit. Not going to count anything. Just go and separate them into suits. All right, so every node's got a pile and it's going to separate them into each of four suits. Now, at this point, we need to do a shuffle. Right? We have a lot of um, nodes. And the shuffle will just make sure that each reducer, as you can see on the right-hand side, is going to get all of the same suit. And then the last step, each reducer just counts all the cards. Pretty straightforward and easy to understand, I think. Um, finally, we talk a little bit about the Hadoop ecosystem. Um, now, Hadoop was originally implemented in Java, which not everyone really wants to work with. Um, and this really gives us a lot of tools to work with Hadoop. So we have different storage tools like HBase, um, which is sort of a column database. Uh, data input like Scoop. Where, so Scoop basically says, all right, you have an SQL database. You want to transfer it over to Hadoop. Uh, Scoop is actually a uh, co combination of SQL and Hadoop. So this is a really good data exchange tool um, to transfer your SQL data into Hadoop. Additionally, we have things like Hive, which is really being able to write SQL and get a MapReduce function in Hadoop 4. Think of it like SQLize, like JavaScript has SQLize to talk to SQL. So SQLize, SQL, if you write in SQL, you can use Hive to talk to Hadoop instead of having to write in Java. And then you have administrative tools uh, like Zookeeper and Ambari that really help coordinate everything that's going on in your uh, system. 
Now, some key takeaways. Hadoop is basically a storage and processing framework for big data. It's got two main components, the Hadoop distributed file system, which basically has redundant and distributed files, which is both cheap and scalable. Um, then there's MapReduce, which is basically a parallel processing system that takes advantage of distributed computing across a lot of nodes at the same time. Um, and the ecosystem, which is just a lot of new tools to make it easier to work with Hadoop. Um, and finally, this is probably what you're going to be asked on an interview, is that it was named after a yellow toy elephant. So really great. So finally, in closing, um, this is just a quote from someone we all have probably heard of here. Um, in pioneer days, they used oxen for heavy pulling. And when the one ox couldn't budge a log, they didn't try to make a bigger ox or grow a larger ox. So we shouldn't be trying for bigger computers, but for more systems of computers. And that's from Grace Hopper. Thank you very much.